Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, it's a beautiful spring day and I'm sitting out on my deck because it's just really nice to be outside as much as possible. Finally got the porch, the patio umbrella up so that I don't have to squint in the sun while I'm sitting out here. And I wanted to talk about old vintage antique books, why I collect them and what kind. And I, I brought just a small selection of sample, I should say, of what I currently have available. Now, I find my books mostly at garage sales, but I do have a set of books over here that I bought at an auction. I did pay a little bit more for these for a couple of reasons. One was because the auction was for a good uh, cause and because I just think these are highly invaluable books. And I wanted to show these different books to you. Now I'll start off with these ones I got at an, uh, the auction and they're called Stepping Stones to Literature. And they're readers that were actually used in the public school system many, many years ago. And um, I got a fourth grade one, I've got sixth grade, and I've got seventh grade. I would love to have had them all, but this was all that they had and I bought all three of them. Um, it was part of a set. And these were published in the late 1800s. This one here is copyright 1897. And so that's, I'll, I'll talk about why I'm, get, why I'm collecting these because I bought these after my kids were past all this. And here's just a few more. This is actually, this is just a book for reading. I collected it because not only is it just old and wonderful, but this one doesn't fall into the reasons why I'm collecting some of these other ones. And this one was copyright 1922. And it's a book by Grace Livingston Hill. Now, in my late teens and early 20s, I was an avid fan of Grace Livingston Hill books. She's a Christian, she was a Christian writer, um, did most of her writing in the early 20th century. You know, like, I can't remember her first book, was 1916 or 13 or something like that. And they're classified as romance, but to me, they weren't really so much about romance because they were very clean. Uh, they didn't really have much romance to them. They were more about the characters and the stories and how they developed along and, and, and how they grew in their faith and grew in their journey of, in different things that they did. Some of them even being about self-sufficiency. And so when I, uh, I found this one in, in like its original print, uh, not this, the, the paperback ones like I used to have that were printed in the 70s. I was very thrilled when I came across this. Now, a couple others. I had a, um, I think it was my last sewing video, the one on skirts where I was talking about why I wear skirts. There was one of, um, one of my followers was asking me about these books. I have, there's actually a total of 11 of them. There's 10 plus an 11th book that is called A Guide, and she was very curious about him, and I'm glad she was because this is a video I've been meaning to shoot for a while. All of these books are readers, and they're, they're meant for each, um, there's one for each uh, age level, basically, up through 10 levels. And what I brought out was, I didn't bring out all 11 books, I brought the first one, and each one was printed in a different year because you can tell they came up with out with the first book and then one year and then the next book the next year and so on and so forth because the dates are consecutive. Let's see. This one is 1909. Really just wonderful reader books. Again, for all ages. The With the last one being more for older ages and the first one being more for primary ages, but here's the interesting thing. Look at this, this is book one, okay? Now, I'll get to, I wanna to get to some more about these school readers in a minute. I'll just show you a couple more books I've collected. This was just a neat Bible story book that I fell in love with when I saw it. Now, I'm all about when kids learn how to read the Bible that they get into reading the King James ASAP. But I don't think there's anything wrong with having a good, a good Bible story book that has, you know, maybe easier to read 
to get them started, but I do believe that it should be supplemented with making sure they're getting the pure, you know, King James version with the old English and all that. Now this particular book, I might have paid a dollar for it at a garage sale, and it was printed in 1907. This one on, on it specifically is states for home, school, and Sunday school. So that was kind of cool. Uh, anyway, I'll show you a little bit more of it because it's just it's just really it's just really kind of neat. It's got illustrations in it, and uh, and then it's it's just neat because it's it's so old. Okay, a couple others I found some more old ones. This one's called Living in God's Word. Looks like by the pictures, without looking at the date, I'm guessing early 1950s. Let's see where we're at. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, 1953. <laughs> oh, here, let me show that to you. And I really was just guessing because the pictures remind me of the Dick and Jane books. So, right here. Okay, I some of these books I haven't looked at in years. I've actually had them put up on a tall, high shelf for a long time. Here's another one that was like a school-related book, Bible Lessons, third grade. And uh, <laughs> and then there's some here that are more historical books. To California by Covered Wagon. Let's see the date on this one. And again, it's meant for young children. And this is 1954. Here's an old copy of Huckleberry Finn and one of Aesop's Fables. I love old antique and vintage books. I, I can't, when I see them at garage sales, it's very difficult for me not to grab them. This one is 1947. And then here's one more I pulled down, the Cozy Hour Storybook. I love old rugged, you know, roughed up covers to books too and let's see this one was actually also in a school book and it, it well it was it was in a it was came from a school and the school dumped up all their old books this one's 19 I think it says 1960 back to to I think you might have figured out there's a theme to most of these old books and they're all centered around children and school. And so even though I collected all these books after I was done homeschooling my children, part of the reason for me to do this was because first of all, I just love old books. I, I, I just, I wish I could collect them all. I've seen so many at garage sales I had to pass up. I wanted so badly, but I passed them up because I do have to limit myself and I limit myself to anything that is educational or um, is related to something that would be a good reader for children. Because one thing I have found, especially when you're looking at old readers, is that the, uh, the, such as the fourth grade reader, these surpass most high school level books. I'm going to find uh, one of the, a poem in this particular book that I'm sure many may have heard before. And especially if you're part of the homesteading, farming, you know, that, you know, community. I know I'm just going to read a part of it because it's a very long poem. And I want to both give you an idea of what fourth grade reading was like back in the late 1800s. And just kind of uh, share with you this poem because it's really great. Okay, so this poem, I'm just gonna read a portion of to you, is called Song of the Sower. And of course, you can tell why I like it so much. So here's what the cover, the opening page to it looks like. Again, I want you to remember, this is a fourth grade reader. The Song of the Sower by William Cullen Bryant. The maples redden in the sun, in autumn gold and beeches stand. Rest, faithful plow, thy work is done upon the teeming land. Bordered with trees whose gay leaves fly on every breath that sweeps the sky. The fresh dark acres furrowed lie and ask the sower's hand. 
Fling wide the generous grain we fling o'er the dark mold of the spring, for thick the emerald blade shall grow when first the March winds melt the snow, and to the sleeping flowers below the early bluebirds sing. Hark the murmuring clods I hear, glad voices of the coming year, the song of him who binds the grain, the shout of those who load the wain. And from the distant grange there comes the clatter of the thresher's flail, and steadily the millstone hums down in the willowy vale. And strew the free and joyous sweep, the seed upon the expecting soil, for hence the plenteous year shall heap the garners of the men who toil. Strew the bright seed for those who tear, the matted sword with spade and share, and those whose sounding axes gleam beside the lonely forest stream till its broad bank lies bare. And him who breaks the quarry ledge with hammer blows, plied quick and strong, and him who with the steady sledge smites the shrill anvil all day long. Brethren, the sower's task is done, the seed is in its winter bed. Now let the dark mold be spread to hide it from the sun and leave it to the kindly care of the still earth and brooding air and winds that from the coldy hold of winter breathe the bitter cold stiffen to stone the mellow mold yet safe shall lie the wheat till out of the heavens unmeasured blue shall walk again the genial year to wake with warmth and nurse with dew the germs we sh lay to slumber here O blessed harvest yet to be, abide thou with the love that keeps in its warm bosom tenderly. The life that wakes and that which sleeps, the love that leads the willing spheres along the unending track of years and watches o'er the sparrow's nest shall brood above thy winter rest and raise thee from thy dust to hold like whisperings with the winds of May and fill thy spikes with living gold from summer's yellow ray. Then as thy garners give thee forth, on what glad errand shalt thou go? Wherever o'er the waiting earth roads wind and rivers flow, the ancient east shall welcome thee to mighty marts beyond the sea. And they who dwell where palm groves sound to summer winds the whole year round shall watch in gladness from the shore the sails that bring thy glistening store. It, it's just a beautiful poem and and reading through this, you know, you're reading the, the whole just natural way of gardening all at the same time. It's just, it's incredible to me. And do you think, do you think you would hear that kind of fourth grade reading nowadays in your public school system? I don't think so. And so with that in mind, not only is there so much beauty in these old books and so much that I just hate to see just go to waste. And a lot of the schools just, you know, they just toss these old books and put them in with the ones that are dumbed down. And I, I say grab them up when you can find them because they're going to be treasures to your children and your grandchildren and beyond and so this is why I collect these old books because I want them to have some good clean readers that have just an awesome vocabulary that you will not find in your modern day children's books and that is why I do what I do and I have many more old books this is just again a sampling and and as a response to the uh, lady who was asking about the this collection of books I have over by my sewing machine because I have them spread throughout the house because not only do I just love them, they also make great decor, rustic looking decor here and there. So anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed this, this little partial poem. I only read maybe about a quarter of it. It's very long. And uh, maybe you'll look it up, Song of the Sower, just great poem. And when you go to garage sales or go to thrift stores and you see some old books, start looking at those old books and consider grabbing them up because they may be an invaluable resource down the road. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.